In this section, we're going to cover month-end and year-end closing procedures. And these would be typical of uh, the kinds of procedures that you would do in any ERP system. The primary difference here is that in, with Business Central, it has a what's called a soft close, meaning even after periods are closed, you can go back into them and make adjusting entries. So the first thing that you normally would do would be to post all um, activity. So you go in and post all finished production orders, You'd take a look at sales orders and purchase orders and make sure that you have everything uh, uh, posted where you have received, not invoiced, or uh, shipped, not invoiced. You'd update your multi-currency rates. If you were using fixed assets, you'd go in and run depreciation. You would reconcile controlling accounts to the general ledger, AP, AR, inventory, and cash. You would do that by running the aging reports. So you'd run aging reports for AR and AP, compare those to your GL balances, run your inventory valuation, and compare that, of course, to the inventory values, and then run your bank statements, your bank reconciliation, and compare that to the GL entries. The next thing that you would want to do is make sure that you handle date restrictions. And we're going to talk about this because this, uh, this is a very important issue with controlling uh, your system within Business Central. In Business Central, there are two areas where you can control date management. And the first one is in the general ledger setup table. And this is really a global date management process. So when I set a date in these two fields in the general ledger setup routine, I am basically saying that I can only post from January 1 of 2020 through January 31st of 2020. And no one can post any kind of transaction in your system that's outside of those two date fields. If I have an individual like a controller or somebody in the accounting department where I want them to be able to make transactions that are outside of that date range, I can go into the user setup table and I can set individual date management parameters for them. So for example, I could go in here and on this first employee, I could say that this employee can post from January 1, 2020 through 12, 31, 2020 if I would choose. They could post to any date within the entire fiscal year by setting this. And this date field that we're looking at here in the user setup table overrides the dates that are set in the general ledger setup table, but it's critical that at month in these dates are advanced in this table, the, the global date area, so that you don't get employees accidentally posting transactions to the wrong month. I want to go to Business Central now and start looking at some of the things that we actually just talked about here. So if I if I go to my general ledger setup, In the general ledger setup area, you'll have the two fields that we just talked about here. So as an example, I could set this up to go from January 1 through January 31st as a uh, uh, setting this so that transactions can only be posted in this particular period. And this controls everything. At month end, I would come in here, I would set this to February and so on and so forth. So that each month I'm controlling where general users can actually post transactions. I'm going to um, zero these out for now because this is a demo database and I don't really care. If users come in here, they can basically post anywhere. Otherwise, they'll just think there are errors in the system. But critical, you set these, these fields uh, at the beginning of each month. If we have a user that we want to be able to override this, we can simply go into the user setup table. And in the user setup, we can enter those two dates as we talked about before for any particular user here. I could enter 010120 and go out to 123120. And this person would then be able to post throughout the entire year. This is not a really good idea, but this is how you can control the dates uh, for posting within Business Central. So the next area we want to take a look at are accounting periods. So if I go out and look for my accounting periods, and I open this page up, 
I can see that I have accounting periods that start on 1-1 of 2017. And in this test database, because we've done these a number of times, they go through 12-1 of 2022. But if I want to create a new year here, I simply just go to Process, Create Year. It defaults to the correct date that we have here. It says I'm going to put in the number of periods 12. Uh, because I'm going to create a whole new year, and I'm going to do it monthly, so I have 1M in here. I click OK. The program goes out and now creates new dates up through 12-1 of 23. So we can see that the, uh, that the program actually just started and filled in where we were here and moved these through to the, um, for another 12-month period. There are other things that you can do to uh, ensure that your system is going to stay in balance. And one of those is if we go and take a look at the chart of accounts and we look at accounts, for example, like uh, our inventory. So here we have resale items, so on and so forth. And for any of these items, these are accounts that we're trying to balance to a sub ledger. So if I open this up, what I can do is take this direct posting off what this does is this ensures that nobody can make a general journal entry or any kind of journal entry to the to this account directly that would throw off the balance between my GL chart of accounts and my sub ledgers. If I need to make a transaction of that type at some point in time, I can come in a controller or an accounting person can come in here, reset this so that they can do direct posting to it and make an entry. But we found through the years that by uh, taking off direct posting on accounts like AR, AP, and inventory, that it helps to maintain your system, keep it in balance. So we've covered all of the things that you would normally do for a month in close in Dynamics Nav. Again, this is a soft close. You would post all open activity, reconcile your, uh, reconcile your controlling accounts, run all of your reports, and set your date restrictions. And this is all that's really required uh, to close a month within Dynamics Nav. There are a couple of more procedures that you need to run at year end. So at year end, we run all of the month and procedures to close the last month of the year. And then we go into another area where we actually close the income statement. And what I want to do, first of all, is go to the general journal. And in the general journal, what I want to do is I'm going to I'll close this to a particular batch. I'm going to use this default batch in order to actually close this. And there are three or four out here in this uh, demo system. But the default one I wanted to show you is empty at this point in time. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go to Close Income Statement. And in the Close Income Statement section, I get a pop-up window that looks much like this. And I'm going to close a particular year. I want to select my general journal template, and this is going to be general journal. I'm going to select the batch in which I want to post all of these transactions to. I'm going to use the default batch. We just went out and looked at this. This is my retained earnings account, and if I drill into this, I can see that this account in this Kronos database, this is the retained earnings account. Uh, I'm going to say closing statement for 2019 here. And then this area down at the bottom, this ellipsis, this is extremely important. Any uh, dimensions that you're using out here, you should include these in this month and close to make sure that everything is balancing out by dimension as well as anything else. Once I have this done, what I do is just click OK, and this only posts these, it posts all the transactions into the general journal default batch for me to go in and review before I actually post them to close my year. And so what it's doing, it's taking my income or loss, it's transferring it to the retained earnings account, and then it's going to zero out all of my income and expense accounts. So I click OK here. The program runs through all of these accounts as the journal has been successfully created. So if we navigate back to the general journal, and I look at my general journal default batch. These are all of my account, uh, accounts out here now that will go out and actually um, do my month and close. This will actually take everything from 
um, all of my expense items, zero them out, transfer the net of that to my retained earnings account. After I'm comfortable that all of this has, is in here correctly, then I can post this journal to actually close my year end. After I've posted these transactions, what I do is go back out to my uh, accounting periods. And in the accounting period area, I can perform an accounting period close. So what I can do here is that I can actually go out and say close year. Now, none of these years that are in here are actually closed. So I'm going to close 2017 here. So I can go out here and I can pick close year. And it's going to close 1-1 of uh, 2017 through the end of the year. I say yes to this. And what this does is it actually goes out and marks all of these as closed and locked. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't go back in here and uh, with proper permissions and post into prior years. But this indicates to the system that these years have been closed. This fiscal year is now done. And this really completes your, um, your year-end close process.